As the Prime Minister said, we, even if we are, we are a very small nation, we want to take our, our part of the responsibility on the challenges when it comes to safety in the region and when it comes to uh, reducing greenhouse gas, house gases and so on. But we also want to get our part of the business in the area, the growing business. Um, these are the Faroe Islands, and this is the border between Britain and the Faroe Islands. And if we look uh, a bit back in time, for 15, like 15 years, Everybody in the Faroe Islands was hopeful, if not sure, that we were going to find oil and we were going to be an oil-producing nation. Because right on the other side of the border, a few meters from the border, the British have found huge amounts of oil. Some of the biggest oil fields of Britain are close to the, very close to the Faroe East border. So we thought this is going to happen to us as well. So we had uh, a lot of uh, licensing rounds and uh, the, uh, the interest from international oil companies was very big. And uh, they established themselves in the, in the Faroe Islands. Uh, they made uh, seismic research, they drilled, and we got uh, our, our own companies as well. Two companies, Atlantic Petroleum and, and Faroe Petroleum, taking part in what happened in Faroe waters. And uh, they, these two companies are now active producing oil in British and in, uh, in the Norwegian waters. We even had a minister of oil. There was no oil. But we were so sure that this is going to happen, that we had a minister of oil. Here he is in the middle, visiting an oily neighbor to the south, listening to the music, the music of the future, we could say. We, we were sure this is going to happen. Uh, and of course, the Faroese companies saw the possibilities of serving, uh, selling services to the big oil companies that were operating in our waters. We got a lot of uh, supply ships built. Uh, we got uh, two big companies, relatively big companies. Of course, we are very small, so everything is big in, in the Faroes. With tens of ships now operating in uh, Faroes, in, in the Norwegian, British, and actually all over the world. And, uh, well, this is the result. After 15 years, nine wells have been drilled. Some have been uh, dry, mere so-called dusters. But in several of, several of them, of the wells that have been drilled, there have been clear indications of oil and gas, but they've not hit the elephant yet. They've not found it in producible amounts. But it, it's, 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 it, it, it is, it, it's an, an established fact that it is there. But now, of course, the price of crude oil is very low, and the, price, the costs of drilling in Faroese waters is very high. So this is a very difficult match. So actually, at the moment, there's, there are no further planned drillings in the Faroe Islands. But in 2017, we'll have another licensing round and we hope that some companies will see the possibilities of still drilling and finding the elephant we're looking for in Faroese waters. But we won't just wait until that happens, because during these 15 years, we've, we've, we've changed as a nation. Our, our workforce has changed. We've gone from zero to like 1,200 people that are skilled workers in, in the oil business. 1,200 is a very small number, but for us, relatively, it's a big number. And they're now working uh, in, in other countries. And the Faroe Islands are still situated where they were before, right on the threshold between the Arctic and Europe. It's a very good place. And if you're looking at the, the further uh, the, the sailing routes, the sea routes that are coming up, that are opening up to the north, we are, could we say, right in the middle of the road. This is, of course, a big uh, possibility for us. And this is the possibility we want to, to use more and get more, and more, more, more getting into, into the business. The amount of ships in the Fer in Faroese waters has uh, multiplied various times. This is the number of tankers in Faroese sea waters, in, in, in the Faroese sea area. It has grown like between 400 and 500 percent in the last seven, eight years. And this, of course, gives us possibilities that we want to use, make use of. I mean, we have developed a new business strategy in order to be a part of the business that takes, part in, that takes place in the Arctic region. Uh, we call it the Faroe Islands Maritime Services. And uh, we know from, uh, from, uh, from our, all our, our, our companies that work in the business that uh, a, sh a, a tanker or a cargo ship that comes into a harbor doesn't just want to change the crew or doesn't, doesn't just need to refuel. They need a lot of things. So we've gathered a a several companies all in all the relevant areas. You can look at, you know, mechanical industries, hotels, harbors, divers, and so on. And we offer a, a full package, we call it a full service maritime 
pit stop because we are right on the road, as I said. If you look closer at uh, some of these uh, companies, maritime courses are, we have a university in the Faroe Islands that uh, offers educations in all relevant mar maritime educations. We have officer, officers, hundreds of officers that are on all our own uh, ships and on, uh, on the foreign ships sailing all, all around the world. This, of course, is important to make business that you know that your, your partner is well educated and the Faroese workforce indeed is very well educated in the area. We can look at uh, harbors, for example. We have six harbors in the area. And I found it very, I found it very interesting to hear um, Scott Minard before talking about investments and harbors in uh, the Arctic region. He did not mention the Faroe Islands one single time. He mentioned all the other countries in the area, but the country that is right on the coming main road, he did not mention once. So I think we've been a bit overlooked. Here are the six relevant harbors that are in the Faroe Islands. If you take a closer look at one of them, this is the harbor of Toshaun. Uh, in the capital, this is the harbor of uh, Runavik. Fairly big uh, harbors relatively to the country's size. And both these harbors are now being expanded substantially. Uh, we, are we, are, we are undertaking one of the, uh, some of the biggest uh, investments in infrastructure ever in the Faroe Islands in, in order to get a, a, to, to, uh, get a to uh, increase the capacity in, uh, substantially in order, to in order to be able to attra attract bigger ships, more ships, and in, in order to be able to provide better services to these ships. Uh, we could look at uh, transport. One big advantage in the Faroe Islands is that everything is very close. It's an in incredibly small country. There are 18 islands, but these islands are, the main islands are, co are connected with undersea tunnels. So nothing is further away than one hour. Whatever you need, if it exists in the country, you can have it within one hour, which is, of course, an in in incredible uh, advantage. We look at, uh, at, at uh, air transport. We have just expanded our airport. And uh, even if the Faroe Islands are in a, in a place that's sometimes very foggy and often very windy, the regularity of air transport now is very, very close to 100%. If we look at, uh, of, well, of course, the, the biggest issue, the biggest argument for attracting uh, ships uh, to, to come to the Faroe Islands is that we have proven competences. This is not new. We have had ships coming to the Faroese harbors for some years now, making reparations, changing crew, refueling, buying food, making small and big reparations. And last year, we passed a very important threshold because last year we had uh, an oil rig, a very big oil rig, that was operated by Statoil in the Faroe Islands. Of course, big companies are a bit skeptical. Can we do really, really big works in such a tiny place? And they took the chance, and it was uh, managed, operated by the Faroese company Mest, and uh, involving a lot of, uh, of Faroese companies. And uh, the Statoil afterwards said that the work was very, very well done indeed. They would recommend it to others. So this was, of course, a test and we passed the test, and this, this is why we now can offer ourselves with big, bigger cred credibility to the business. There also are more, should we say, wild or far-fetched ideas in the Faroe Islands. This is uh, a vision called Airport 19. 19 nine, it should maybe be 20, because 19 is because we have 18 islands. This is supposed to be island number, number 19. If, I, if Iceland is that, this is island number 20, of course. <laughs> the idea is to construct, to build a new island that's it, that is a complex and integrated airport and harbor. This is a private initiative. We can't afford it to, to finance it publicly at the moment. We're looking, the, the people behind this private initiative are looking for investors around the world now. It is a bit far-fetched, some, some would say, but it's an international airport uh, fulfilling all standards and you have at the same place a harbor. A harbor. And this, we're looking for people who want a, firm, a foot firmly in the Arctic region, and somebody who can see, see the advantages of having such a pit stop right in the, one of the main roads of future global traffic. We hope to find investors for this. But, but this is, of course, this is a bird on the roof. The other invest, investments, the other uh, expandings of, of our harbors are birds in the hand. It is being done. So, uh, all in all, uh, we think we have five good arguments for attracting uh, 
ships and oil rigs and, uh, and other things to the Faroe Islands to get, uh, to get uh, things done. Uh, we have uh, the ge geographic location is optimal. We have proven competences, as I said. As it's a very small nation, we have a very high flexibility of things, getting things done. Everything is very close. You can get anything within an hour. And our price level is indeed competitive when we, when we compare it to other harbors in the, in the area. So this was uh, basically what I had to say. Uh, of course, we, we, this is the business, and we also want to be responsible when it comes to reducing greenhouse gases. And uh, the chairman of our uh, electricity company, Hawkins Juris, is going to talk about that. Your floor is yours. Thank you.